everyone. In this video, I have six examples for you, all of which are about factoring completely. Now, the reason that most factoring questions say factor completely is they want you to do multiple steps. Multiple things have to be done to each expression. So example one here, factor completely. We always, always, always should start with greatest common factor because that's usually one of the factoring methods you have to try. So in this question, 50R squared minus 72, there is a GCF, right? Both of these numbers are even. That's the biggest number that can go into them, two. And when we divide that, we get 25R squared minus 36. Now this two is just gonna hang out there while we do the rest of the factoring. And this right here is factorable now again, right? So we'll leave the two out there and we'll factor that. That's a difference of two squares. It's two things with a minus sign, and everything involved is a perfect square. And to factor one expression like that, we make two parentheses, one with a plus and one with a minus, and then we square root everything involved. So 25R squared would be 5R, and we write that twice, and the square root of 36 is 6. And then we check to see if that can't be factored anymore, that can't be factored anymore, and that can't be factored anymore. So this is our answer to number one. Number two, let's always try GCF first and then see if there's something else. There is a GCF here. There's actually, they both have a three and they both have uh, P to the third can be taken from both, right? They both have at least three Ps. So let's take, um, let's take a negative three P to the third. And the reason for that is I want this to be a minus because if there's difference of two squares factoring, I'll want that to be a minus. So when I factor out negative 3p to the third, that'll leave us with p to the fourth. And when we factor all of that out, that will be minus one. And as I mentioned, uh, I was hoping that it would work out to be a difference of two squares. And look at that, that's a difference of two squares. p to the fourth is a perfect square and one is a perfect square. So we're gonna factor that as p squared plus one and p squared minus one. This just kinda of hangs out out here. We can't do anything else to it. And hey, look at that. That is still a difference of two squares. So let's factor that again as p plus one, p minus one. This one can't be factored because you can't do difference of two squares when there's a plus. And this is still just tagging along. So this is our final answer here. It's a huge answer, um, but that's completely factor. All right. Number three, I have a trinomial here. So let's see if we can maybe get it to be a, um, a smaller trinomial. Look at that, they all are even. So let's factor out a negative two. And we get v squared plus seven v plus 10. So that two was able to make all those numbers uh, a little smaller, a little easier. Now we can factor that. Um, I need two numbers that multiply to 10 that add up to seven. That's gonna be five and two. And so our answer is negative two, or at the CV plus five, BB plus two. So a pattern you'll notice here is that it's usually greatest common factor. And then we follow up with one of the other factoring methods that we've learned. All right, next we have another trinomial here. So let's start with GCF. They, they all are even. Is there a bigger number? No, there's not a bigger number. So let's just factor out a two. Now they do all have an X in common. So let's take an X too. So we have two X and then what's left over? We have five X squared plus 11 X minus 12. All right, now we're gonna have to do factor, factoring uh, by breaking this middle and then grouping. So I need to label this as A and this is B and this is C. Uh, a, C is negative 60 and B is 11. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 60 that add up to 11. So that'll be 15 and four. And in this case, it'll be um, I need it to be a positive 11, so it'll be plus 15x minus 4x. And we'll just leave that 2x out from here. 
I'll put them in parentheses just to show separate. And then let's factor by grouping here. Let's do a GCF of these first two here. That would be the GCF is 5x, and we'll end up with x plus 3. And our second two, the GCF will be negative 4, and we'll end up with x plus 3. Again, just bring the 2x along here. And then finally for our last step here, I'm running out of room on the screen here. Our final answer, I'll write it up top so we can see it. We have 5x minus 4. Remember when we do grouping, the stuff in front of the parentheses is an answer, and the stuff in parentheses is an answer. X plus 3 is our other stuff in parentheses. And then uh, 2x is still floating out there, so let's just stick it right there. So our answer to question number 4 is that. Now make this clear that this is the answer to question 3. All right, let's do question number 5. Question number five has four terms, so it'll probably end up being a grouping factor in question. But let's see um, if we can GC out. All right, two and three. Right away, I see those are prime numbers. There's nothing that can go into those bolt. Uh, but they all have a's in common, so let's factor out a squared. We factor out an a squared, we get 2a to the third minus 3a squared minus 14a plus 21 and now let's do factoring by grouping let's group these two the gcf of those two would be a squared and we're left with 2 a minus 3 and let's group those two the gcf of those two would be uh, 7 and that would leave us 2 a now if i factor out just a 7 that will be a positive 3 so I'm going to factor out a negative 7 so that that becomes a negative and that becomes a negative as well all right and then that a squared is just still kind of hanging out here and then now our final step is uh, the stuff in front of the parentheses is a factor and the stuff inside the parentheses is a factor and then don't forget that a squared that's out here. So that is the answer to question five. And then our last question here, I have a feeling this is gonna be a long one. I'll move that out of the way. Um, they all, let's do GCF first. They all have uh, at least three A's, so let's see if we can factor out A to the third. Um, they're all even. Let's see if we can find a bigger number that goes into them. Um, doesn't look like it, so it looks like we're just going to factor out 2A to the third. And once left over, when we factor out 2A to the third, it is negative 4A to the third plus 3A to the second plus 36A. Uh, minus 27. All right. So that's factored out. Now we still have four things here. Let's see if we can factor by grouping. Let's GCF those two. The GCF of those two is a squared. And when I take that out, I'll get negative 4a plus 3. And when I factor those two, the GCF of those two is 9. And let's make it a negative 9, because I want this to be a negative 4a, and I want this to be a positive 3. And then this 2a to the third is just kind of tagging along. And then our factoring by grouping, this is negative 4a to the third, our stuff in parentheses, our stuff in front of the parentheses, and then the stuff on the front just gets tacked on. And then today, look at that. Our last step here before I box it, a squared minus 9 can be factored again. That's the difference of two squares, a plus 3, a minus 3. So this whole thing ends up having four different factors here. So the answer to question 6 is all of that. And that's it for factoring. So just to recap, when we're factoring, 
we want to try, I'll write this right here. We want to try GCF as one of our factoring methods. Uh, we also want to look for a difference of two squares. Trying to abbreviate so I have room. We also want to try trinomial. We also want to try grouping. So any of these things could be an option. And sometimes you're going to have to do multiple. And I would say always try GCF first and then look for these three. And sometimes you have to look at these three multiple times after you GCF. And you might do multiples. You might do GCF and difference of two squares and trinomial or something like that. Um, all right. So those are the methods of factoring. Be careful when you're factoring completely that you haven't stopped until everything's factored completely. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.